to begin would be if you could briefly uh, explain uh, as a, uh, from the scientific medical point of view, what, what is breath for a human being? How does it work and what is, and then maybe from there I can try to uh, explain so, what we do in meditation. Yeah. When uh, people engage in meditative breathing, there's a couple of different things that they do and things that they talk about. And there's a variety of medical consequences of that kind of breathing. So there's um, what's called belly breathing or diaphragmatic breathing, which is where um, as you breathe in, um, the diaphragm goes down. And so therefore the wall of the tummy comes out. So when you breathe in the tummy, the diaphragm goes down and pushes the contents of the abdomen out. Um, and so um, people often do this as part of um, Shavasana with yoga, where as they breathe in, their tummy goes up and as they breathe out, their tummy goes down again and, and they exhale. That's thought to be very calming is taught a lot as sort of anxiety management and also breathing management for people with um, asthma and chronic lung disease. Then there's a different kind of breathing that is taught in yoga and actually is what you teach and is also taught in Pilates. And that's where you maintain abdominal muscle strength as you breathe in. So if you slightly tense your abdominal muscles, and you breathe in, then as your diaphragm goes down, but if you've tensed your abdominal muscles, your diaphragm can't actually go so far down. And so what happens is actually your rib cage then goes out. To get air into your lungs, it has to go somewhere. And so you have a much better expansion of the bottom part of your chest. That kind of breathing is called rib diaphragmatic breathing or lateral breathing, depending on what people call it and um, its advantage is that it stops people from breathing in the top of their chest so when people feel anxious or they're distressed or sick they tend to breathe with all of the muscles in the top of their chest and so actually don't use their whole lungs so this um, lateral breathing or rib diaphragmatic breathing really fills the base of the lungs up and also um, really expands all of the bottom part of the rib cage and uh, all of the little tiny muscles that are in between the um, ribs. So those two types of meditative breathing are the two classic ones. There's obviously lots of other sorts of breathing that people do as part of yoga. What's super interesting, that diaphragmatic breathing, either, either sort, it triggers the soothing mechanisms of our nervous system. So whichever form of breathing you um, take up, part of our automatic nervous system called our parasympathetic nervous system, mm -hmm. and that um, goes through our whole chest and abdomen. And when we breathe like that, uh, it's very soothing. The other thing that's interesting is if you have a forced long exhalation, so that um, forced exhalation is particularly soothing. So if you really need to calm yourself down, that will be the way to do it. And in the last few years, there's been just the most amazing explosion of neuroscience about how focusing on breathing actually rewires all sorts of connections in your brain uh, and people are starting to understand that much better and so there's lots of work about how this has improved depression post-traumatic stress disorder anxiety um, also improved people's cognitive function prevented dementia all sorts of things so there you go a quick medical summary of um, breathing thanks first of all for kind of explaining the medical physical physiological uh, science behind it how it actually works I, I i understand very little about that i've just come to this uh, through the zen practice and more or less intuitively um, 
often people nowadays really seem to breathe rather in a shallow way and to consciously pay attention to our breath uh, can be a very helpful entrance in meditation. Plus it seems it can be quite uh, beneficial physically, mentally, psychologically as well. One of the things that appeals to me about breathing as the focus is it helps to get you out of your head uh, because it's it's directing your attention to something that in a sense is more basic than thinking whether we think about breathing or not we breathe and if not we're dead so it's always already happening so rather than go into the mind our thoughts some conundrum or religious principle or something just to bring it to the the physical basis uh, literally what we are doing that keeps us alive that man maintains our life <laughs> why don't we just stick with that it's, it's a very elegant <laughs> way to deal with what's going on in our head but perhaps uh, one of the most important principles is not to think about breathing, but actually to return to the physical breath. Uh, I know many people in Japan, especially where in Rinzai Zen, some forms of Rinzai Zen, there's a real focus. And I grew up for a while in that tradition, a real focus on this forced out breath, you know, at the end of the out breath, almost kind of forcing it out. And everything almost is centered on that kind of breathing, that kind of practice. And uh, there's a lot of problems associated with it. I often see people coming from those places. They have headaches, they have stomach aches. They're, they're more frazzled than when they began. Um, and they feel uh, very much defeated often because they see their Zen master breathing this way and you know, demanding that they do it as well. They can't, their lung capacity or whatever the reason may be, they can't do it. And so they just feel, I can't even breathe right. How can I practice Zen? And so uh, they, they often come out of this kind of shattered and it's really a shame. Uh, I would say if you're practicing properly, the focus is quite natural and the breath, it's quite easy to hook up with the breath. If you're still wrapped up in your head, as you know, I myself was for years, <laughs> um, if you're still wrapped up in your head, it can be quite difficult. So just using the breath, again, the breath itself and not thoughts about it. And as you explained earlier, that kind of, I guess, the diaphragm, this is something, yes, that uh, women probably know a lot better than men, especially if they have children, huh? how to, of course, we're breathing with our lungs, but you're using the muscles here. Huh? And so that it naturally extends the breath. It becomes longer, slower, and deeper, but it, it does take time. And Another problem I see with the people who do this kind of forced breathing, diaphragm breathing in the Rinzai Zen is uh, this kind of uh, focus and this kind of force, it does create uh, physical problems when they do it sometimes. So uh, it's got to be done with, with care I would say by simply giving all of your concentration to the breath, it will happen naturally. It does, it does take time, it does take time, but to get out of your head <laughs> and, and down into 
the tanden or the, the hara, the center, the physical center of the body is really helpful. It's really helpful for the practice because it's bringing all of that energy to bear right here rather than up in the head. Of course, that is just the beginning, but it's a very good way to enter uh, Zen meditation, to get out of the head and into, in a sense, into the body, literally, you know, into the body. And also that sense that you also suggested this kind of uh, focus, concentration that happens. But the, the physiology that you have uh, explained, I, I know almost nothing about that. Um, but by doing it, by, by practicing it, you see that And then, as you said, at the end of the out breath, just letting the belly not go in, you know, but rather it goes out at the end. One of the reasons we have our hands like this in formal zazen, you can feel that's exactly where it is. Here's the belly button, the navel. And if you're sitting properly, the hands are like this. That's, that's precisely the place. So you can feel it. And to me, the, the uh, you said a kind of a restful, calming, hmm? physiologically, it seems they can find evidence for this. It does work, it is calming, but I can't help but wonder if there's something about clarifying that's also going on because that's uh, the experience of myself and many other people. It's as if all of the, mental turmoil just dissolves. We're not, we're not uh, fighting it or wrestling it to the ground or anything like that. It just kind of, it's like being unplugged. And the result is this, uh, what is sometimes described as samadhi, uh, a kind of a concentrated oneness, which is helpful in Zazen, of course, but also in daily life, just to be able to be totally focused on the matter at hand. So that's a completely lay person description <laughs> in contrast to yours. Thank you. You know, there's a whole lot of long term meditators' brains getting stuck down through PET MRI scanners. And what they do discover is that that kind of practice completely rewires human brains and so the clarity that you describe whether it's something that happens in the short term i'm not sure but the changes that happen over the longer term are really remarkable and so it may well have something to do with clarity i, I guess the most uh, fascinating thing in terms of zen practice is in doing this kind of breathing and just allowing all of the energy to flow down to where the breath is in a sense coming from and going to is it comes to be so settled so calm and clear that in effect the, the activity of the mind of, of the other five senses as well, but most importantly, the activity of the mind, uh, how to say, it comes to rest, it comes to complete rest. So you can still function in a way that's uh, unimaginable in our ordinary consciousness. You know, there's a, a subtle, awareness so to speak but it is not going out or pulling anything in at the time it's fully there fully there and yet it's completely settled and uh, you know this is 
extremely important in sustained Zen practice. Without that kind of an entrance, the mind can't come to a full and complete stop so that it can then really see, so to speak. But it's, a, it's fascinating that the kind of physical and psychological uh, improvements that people, you, know, you can actually find scientifically, you can study. The, the physical posture is also uh, involved because breathing, when you breathe well, you find that you naturally, your posture improves. Um, and it seems to go hand in hand, you know, you don't have to sit in, in full lotus posture, but it, when you do, and you see how it opens up the hips and then the, the abdomen is, is there and uh, allowed to really open up, the back is naturally erect, not artificially, you know, but naturally following the curvature of the spine. Uh, I can understand why it would turn out to be very beneficial as well, because you're, uh, they go hand in hand. The body is uh, naturally erect, the head, the neck, like this, you know, you're not bent over like at the computer. And then you're able to breathe more easily, more deeply. <laughs>